Hey, what's up guys? Today in this video of Adonis.js, we are going to look at file uploads. Yes, file uploads is a very important section because <clears throat> um, most of the time your application will be handling files from end users. Some files can be public, some files can be private, but overall we will need to handle files from end users. So in this video, let's look at what Adonis has to offer in terms of handling file uploads. Generally, what happens is the file is coming as part of the request object, right? So when the file is inside the request object, any node application will need a parser to understand that there is a file object inside it, correct? And generally, my understanding is that when that binary is coming to the server, it is stored at a temporary location. Okay, because the request is holding the binary data. So it needs to write somewhere uh, for you to be uh, for you to, you know, I mean, uh, to make it available for you. And then after, you know, we are asking the request object to move that particular file to some particular location, right? That file is copied from the temp folder to some other place. Okay, that's how typically a file is being processed. So let's look at what Adonis uh, does and how we can work with that particular thing. So before we get into it, I would like you to understand there's one thing inside kernel.php, we have this where is it right the body parser okay so if you if you look at the documentation it says that the body parser middleware is registered in this kernel.ts and it automatically processes all files for multi-part form data okay the multi-part form data is how the files come into our request object so we understand that this is already in place and hence we don't need to do anything additional so let's go and create a route for it. So we are going to create a post route. Name is file upload. And obviously I need the context because I will have to pass the context to the controller. That's how I will get the request response and other stuff. Let's open up the expense controller. And let's just say we will have a new method which will handle the file upload. The file upload Obviously, we'll get the context. So we will destructure certain things from the context. What all do we need? We need the request and we need the response. That's about it. And let's just say by default, we are sending a success as a response. It's a little, a little weird, but for the sake of example, we can, you know, let's, let's move with that. Okay. Now we need to understand what is coming in the request. Uh, now, what are the files? So why don't we do files equals request dot and let's see what all things we have. I can see there is something called it all files. Let's see what we will finally get from that. So a console log will be required. Like this. And in here we will do return new expense controller dot handle file upload send the context okay so this is done let's go to postman and try and upload something and see what happens now inside postman what we are doing is it's a post url file upload let's confirm yes route.post so it's a post url um, this is form data let's just say the key is banner Okay, and instead of text, I want this to be a file and we select an image. Why don't we make a request now? Hit send. We get a success. Obviously, the success is coming from this thing. However, let's look at the console. Okay. So as I told you, you can see there is a temp path. Now, obviously my folder name has a problem. Um, it seems the name is given in a way that it has changed my gender. But anyways, that doesn't matter. But the understanding here is that this is the entire file object. We have some data 
the client name. So basically, this is the file name which I have. Field is banner, headers, this is an object. Drive, drive manager, I think this is the drive, uh, the local disk. Okay, size validator we have here. Validated is false. Okay, we haven't validated yet. Extension validator, validated false. Multipart is true. Yes, it, it because it's a multipart file, right? Multipart is uh, the type of data which we are sending. So these things are here and we get the size as well. Extension type status consumed. Interesting. So there is quite a few interesting key points here to look at. There are certain properties which we can use. Okay. But then this is still temporary data. This is not uploaded yet because we just um, console the file. If I have multiple files, for example, banner 2, and if I hit send again, so you can see this is banner, same thing, banner 2. Fair enough. So which means I can process as many files as I want. But then right now we are only interested in banner. So let's just delete this and move ahead. Okay. So constant banner equals request. So there is all files, but I know there is also file and this will allow us to focus on only one particular file object. So this is my banner. Let's just comment this out files we don't need. Now with the banner, what can we do? Let's just say we have a condition that if not banner, return response.send or no file uh, rather let's say problem with file generic enough so now what is going to happen is if i do send obviously it is giving me success but then if i don't send that file it says problem with file. However, do see that we still have status code of 200. Okay, we will address that in a bit. But at least I'm able to check whether the banner is present or not. But then, you know, there is more to just checking whether the file exists or not, right? So what have we seen? We have uploaded the file, right? And we are now validating the file, right? So here, if you see, we have certain abilities to check what kind of file we have. We have a size check available with us. We have extension name checks available with us. So why don't we do that? And the important thing is it is executed on the request file as you know a second parameter. So why don't I copy this? Let's stick it as is. Um, Okay, and what we are saying over here is the banner size limit is 2 MB extensions, which I'm allowing is JPEG, PNG, GIF. Okay, fair enough. So now what is going to happen? Obviously, if I send the file, I'm going to get a success. But then let's just say, um, Right now, this is a PNG file. Yes, it's a PNG file, right? So why don't we remove that? Hit save and do something. It still does a success. Why? Because in here, the condition was only if the banner is not present. But if we look at the object, can you see there is something called as validated true false right so what happens is and again this is my understanding but we get 
a property banner dot is valid oops why is it not coming um sorry or this should be or and banner dot yes is valid so with this in place if we now try to send the image we have a problem and that is happening because now we are checking whether the banner is present or not and also whether the banner is valid or not so why don't we do one more thing why don't we console the banner okay and see whether I was right about the fact that the is validated false true property changes or not so it's just an experiment let's just see I'm also not sure what will happen okay let's go over here validated is true fine so we can understand from this that it now gives a state which is the validation did run but then let's see if there is anything in the object which tells us whether you know the is valid is present or not so is ready size validator validated fine validated so if you see the extension validator also it got executed and there are errors okay fair enough so i think that is how you know the internals are working but what we understand is if we don't get is valid as true then we have a problem fine what next how do we move the file so for moving the file this is one way which is uploads but um, yeah i think what i will have to do is now i know that this application is not going to come automatically there's some problem with the imports on adonis which i haven't been able to figure out yet okay if i directly do so I, okay let me actually show you that so that you don't waste time because you may run into that problem and then you might feel okay so why was that code running for amitabh and it's not running for me let's just say what are we doing we are doing image dot move and then application dot tempath right so let's come to this particular thing um await banner dot move okay application now it says application dot tempath right now if i do dot as you can see that thing is not present now obviously the documentation is not wrong what is happening is let's come over here it is importing application from adonis application but what we really want to import is application from core slash application and that's the problem i don't know why that doesn't work there is some discussion going around but yeah i um, haven't really figured out a way but i will definitely do that and when i finally do that i will let you know okay so banner upload by the way so we what we are saying is application dot tempath um, and then this is the folder name you will see what happens keep an eye on this particular area we have apps commands everything right now if i send the request it says problem in file obviously because we haven't added png send we have a success and can you see this folder temp inside that we have banner upload right and inside that we have our image this is the image so we were able to upload an image which is coming as part of the request awesome right okay what else i think that is the question now we have been uh, able to upload the file but then 
there are definitely certain additional things which are required for example if you if you see when we are not sending the file we do get a message which says problem with file but see the status code that's not typically how you would like to handle your request right you would like to validate it you would like to return a status code of 422 which is the validation error i think it's 422 if i'm not wrong let's see validation error uh, validation error status code da, 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 da. there is something called as um let's see what does this say so 400 is bad request yes that i know unprocessable entity yes so 422 right so how do we send a 422 status code for the validations okay how do we do that so this is one way of validating things but i won't say this is the um i mean it won't give you the validation error okay i i i don't think i i can say that it's not the best way i mean if you have certain scenarios where you want to check specific things this is how you do it but if you want to do validation okay and so what do we do when we want to do validation let's do let's check so let's just say we have constant post data schema why in Adonis, how you validate things is you create a schema. Okay, it's similar to let's say a, uh, a shape of the request. What you are expecting, you are saying, okay, now these are the keys, these are the type of keys I'm expecting, this kind of a data, something like that, right? Which is very similar to let's say if you are familiar with uh, Laravel or Nest.js, right? They they allow you to define the shape of your request object and then you put the rules inside it. So in here, again, um, Adonis allows you to create schemas, okay? Uh, and using that schema, we can validate the request. I'll again, copy this for now. Come over here and let's just add that. So what do we do? We do schema.create and it will take an object and I'm saying that I'm expecting banner which is of type schema file okay which is a method which takes additional settings so what are they let's see options it's a partial validation options can we get that we have size and extension names exactly the two things which we added over here right and again that's the beauty of typescript you don't need to many times look at the docs you can just go inside you know the um, function and understand what is expected so size yes 2mb why don't i just simply uh, copy this as well why why should we type your developers should be lazy to copy and paste right um, okay so we have the schema in place now how do we validate we say constant post data equals await uh, sorry request dot i think request had that function yes request dot validate and then in here as you can see again let's go inside it it takes a parsed typed schema right so which means in here i can do schema and send this or you can even you know be a little lazy and send this entire thing over here as well and i think both should work right and finally when we have the validated post data what we can do is again you need to make it and uh, this is an async function so that await is important okay don't forget that so post data dot 
now we have banner so it understood that the validated um, function is going to return me banner see these are niceties of you know when your framework or when your code is being clearly understood by the frame uh, by the um you know the editor right because of you know the, all the types which we are sending so post data which is coming from the validate function has a key called banner and because that banner is of type file i get certain functionalities to it and one of them is move so let's move that file to application temp path and this okay let's delete this folder yes i do want to delete it you need okay come on let me do that and delete permanently okay yeah my linux system doesn't ask so many questions it believes in you know it believes me and when i say yes delete it it simply deletes it <laughs> windows for some reason asks too many questions i don't know why anyways now again first of all we will try to fail the request what is going to happen 422 perfect if we send the file still 422 but the error changes it says required validation failed field banner rule required fine so which means we are able to understand that there is a required field which is banner so we send the banner and then the error changes now the rule says file dot extension the message is invalid file extension png only gif is allowed fair enough let's go over here png save and send finally we got a 200 ideally it should have been a 201 let me see can i send a status code as second argument body any generated e tag generate e tag okay um json body string so in laravel i do get the option to send the status code as second argument okay let us finish that thing first and then we will see so as you can see temporary folder is already created and we again have the file right so this move is working let's do one 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 and see if still it passes come over here yes it does the file is uploaded so you can see i'm not showing you the old folder where we uploaded the thing but then let's see how do we uh, response dot right i want to send a set different status code bad request created i think this will be the one created is what let me see this is okay created generated i think created is 201 if i'm not wrong i mean my memory is from my memory it says success so file uploaded and now if we hint send yes 201 status code 201 so which means when we are working with apis a correct status code is very important and we are saying yes your file got uploaded correct so yes this is how you are able to upload and save files to your you know folder there is one piece of the puzzle which is you know to understand how files can be uploaded to some cloud service providers like i will try to show you how 
we can upload it to S3. That is something which I'll cover in the in a separate video. But one thing which I would like you to go through is all these file properties. There are a lot of properties available within the file object which you should be aware of because from time to time you will need them. For example, right, um, you may need the client name because if you want to somehow store the original file name of you know, the user who created that file, right, you may want to store it but then while storing the file, you would be changing the file name. You, you don't want the actual user's file name to be there in the disk because what what happens if uh, my image name is screenshot and then some other user uploads one more file with the same name or tomorrow i again upload a file with the same name there will be conflict right so the best option is to create a file name which is very random in nature i mean the name is going to be random so that you know there is no uh, question of override or anything okay you will be able to get yourself saved from a lot of logic around that but then it is quite common to save the client file name because if i have saved something i would like to see the file name which i had uploaded with so that's where you know these kind of things come into picture and yeah that's about it so that's file upload for you apart from the s3 obviously do let me know what you think about this file system whether you find it easy or not yeah if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel